Welcome. Some of you may be new here. So for that reason, I am going to give you guys a quick recap. So on October 25th, I drove myself to the ER because I was having pain in my right lung. Um, in addition to body aches and chills, I um, have been exposed multiple times to COVID because I am an RN and I work in home care. And um, I was exposed to a husband and wife that both had COVID and my job neglected to tell me. Six days later, I developed symptoms, drove myself to the ER, was diagnosed with presumptive COVID, um, although everything was negative. In a nutshell, I've been sick ever since. I have detailed everything from October up until now, basically on my Instagram, which you can check out um, in the link below. I'm going to start from pretty much 2021 and what I'm going through now. And so ever since then, I have seen six specialists. I've been to the ER six times and I'm not having much improvement. Um, and I just say much improvement because my breathing has improved just by a little. I can have a conversation now without getting uh, too short a breath. So I would say that's an improvement. But for the most part, life is still turned upside down. I'm not, I have not had a good day um, as far as me not being sick at all whatsoever, just waking up and feeling like a normal person since I was sick on October 25th. I should also say that I never tested positive for COVID-19. I had three PCR tests, one antibody test, all negative. All negative. It wasn't until I went to an urgent care one day that I was told that, um, you know, the PCR test as well as the other quick five minute test or whatever that you can get are not accurate and the accuracy rate was very low. I was told that the antibody test could um, also be or produce some inaccuracy as well. How do I know that I have COVID-19 or had COVID-19? My doctors say so. In addition to the fact that I was a healthy individual who worked out five days a week doing high intensity cardio, eating healthy, um, had absolutely no issues. And I have or had every single uh, symptom on the CDC's website for COVID-19, including the loss of taste and smell. I have been officially diagnosed as a long hauler and having post-COVID uh, syndrome. I have been told by several doctors that there's not much else that they can do for me and that it's just going to take time, whatever that means. You know, I've been tested for autoimmune diseases to rule those things out as well. And so the list goes on and on and on. I've had multiple CT scans. I've had multiple chest x-rays, lots of blood work, um, multiple, um, MRIs and CT scans of the head and chest. Let's just get into my symptoms. What am I currently experiencing now at the current moment? So currently, I'm going to go from head to toe. So let's start with neurologically. Confusion, disorientation, hallucinations. Those are still going on. Lightheadedness. That's pretty much what's going on with my brain. So from day to day, I wake up every single day and a lot of times I can't remember what I did the previous day. And then some things I just totally don't remember at all. I remember just recently, a week ago, I was taking a shower. I couldn't remember if I washed up or not. And it's frustrating because I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, are you serious? I couldn't remember if I had just washed up. It literally, it was just a matter of seconds. So just things like that, like putting things that go in the refrigerator in the pantry closet instead of in the actual refriger refrigerator, um, delayed thought process. Some days are better than others. You can see right now that I'm talking um, like I normally talk, you know, um, but some days I can't do this. Some days it's very, very slow. Eyes, blurred vision, 
um, where I could just not see things. I could only see a silhouette. Things weren't really clear. I was also having a lot of floaters in my eyes as well. So I had to see an ophthalmologist and now I wear glasses. I had 20-20 vision prior to this with no vision issues at all. Nose. Nosebleeds I'm still having like with actual clots. So I have that pretty much every day and that just started. So a lot of these symptoms didn't start at the beginning. Some of them started like uh, six to eight weeks after I got sick. So the nosebleed started like a day after Christmas and um, it's just clots. And so it's not like nosebleeds, like your typical nosebleeds where you're talking to somebody and, no and blood starts to run down your nose. It's nosebleeds in that I just grab tissue and just like go in my nose and it's clots in my nose. Very bizarre, very weird. I've never seen anything like it where the blood just doesn't flow out in but I stick a tissue in there and there's a bunch of clots and blood that's on the tissue. Very weird. My ears. So sometimes I can hear things regularly and sometimes it feels like the background is totally muted. My mouth. I am now developing like these ulcerations on certain like teeth. It feels also like my teeth hurt in certain areas. Um, chest pain. So right lung pain is still there that was there from day one that's what made me think that I had COVID and why I drove myself to the ER so I have pain that is directly in the middle of my lung so it's like in between my breastbone and my right posterior thoracic area all you medical professionals will know what that means and then if so it's directly deep in the middle so it is my lung they are diagnosing me with pleurisy. If you press here, like my husband and daughter give me massages almost every night um, because my my back and my neck are so tight. Um, but if you press here deep into that rib back here, it is severe pain. And for some reason, the chest pain, the lung pain increases in intensity as the day goes on. And so, at night is when I really start to not feel well. Um, I also forgot to mention with neuro headaches. I have headaches every day. I'm on my eighth week of having a headache every single day. I've had a headache for the past eight weeks every single day. I've been to neuro um, and been on medications a medication that gave me an allergic reaction my throat was swelling up my fingers swole up um i could have died i had refused to go to the er i treated myself and um because the doctors wanted me to go to the er and what i've been seeing in the er it, it, it is what it is but let's stay on track so joints my knees and my hips oh my gosh i'm a yoga instructor was doing yoga almost every day prior to this super flexible now I'm still flexible but the pain that I feel from just sitting on the floor like such sitting like this for a short period of time this knee hurts me severely sitting like this to meditate when I come out of, ooh, when I come out of this position Sometimes I can't come out as easily. I just had a hot shower, so my joints are warmed up. But I come out of those positions very slow, and it's very painful. My knee. See, this this is like what happens when I sit down like that. I have to walk like this. Like, it, it hurts. It really hurts. I guess the last two symptoms would be chronic fatigue and shortness of breath. Everything I do, I have shortness of breath. Um, I get winded. Um, it just is what it is. Um, that's one of my main symptoms is my shortness of breath and decrease in my functional capacity and chronic fatigue. Like this week, I have had eight hours of sleep and restful sleep, you know, and I get up after eight hours and I am still, it still feels like I'm drowsy. Like I just cannot get out of the bed. I also have these coughing spells and I wheeze a lot. I have been signed up to participate in a post-COVID uh, research program. I don't know which doctor signed me up. Nobody told me. Nobody asked me. 
and I read over the research policies and procedures and I was really willing to actually participate but then there were some things in the policies that I that that were kind of funky I think in general how I am dealing with it my spirits are lifted I have a very supportive husband and daughter um, but I have waves of emotions every single day because every time I breathe it's a constant reminder that I'm in pain it's a constant reminder when when I'm when my my legs ache or when I have chills I still have chills every now and then or body aches and things like that and I have headaches every day it's just a constant reminder reminder that I am ill and that you know my life has forever changed and when will I get it back so that's what I'm dealing with but again like I feel like I'm handling it um, much better than I was a couple months ago because I really wasn't doing well with it then. Despite everything that has occurred, God is good and um, it could be a lot worse. I was never on a ventilator. I was never admitted to the hospital. Lastly, I don't plan on going back to the ER unless I'm near death, honestly, seriously. Um, I have been to the ER six times and in those six times, I have seen the the actual demise of healthcare in the United States. I've gone to more than one ER and as a nurse and as a patient, um, they just watching people. The last time I went to the ER, I literally cried watching how they treated everybody else. I felt like I was in a movie. I was so emotional because I just could not believe what was happening, how patients were being treated. Patient care has declined drastically and um, I refuse. I refuse to go back to the emergency room. Like I just refuse, um, which is why when I had the allergic reaction, I didn't go. I mean, that was a life or death situation, honestly. Um, and I should have went, but I, I just, I prayed about it. I just, I, you know, even I'm literally, I felt like I couldn't breathe. My, I felt like my throat was, you know, um, I kept checking my oxygen. It was normal. And I was just like, yo, I'm just going to deal with this the best way that I can. And it was a nightmare, but that goes to show you how bad I feel like the emergency room care has been the way that I deal with this is to just take it day by day one day at a time literally yesterday was yesterday tomorrow is tomorrow and they are just way too much for us to deal with in one day um, it's too much stress too much anxiety so every single day I try to practice mindfulness and think about what's going on at the present moment and just be engulfed in that rather than think about anything outside of the present moment because it's just too stressful so that's how i am coping with all of this um and so it's been very helpful so thank you guys for rocking with me in this video and um like i said i will do these life updates as things continue to progress or not